I know that you have been working your ass off for a whole year and finally, finally it is time for you to take that well-deserved vacation. You start looking for a trip that brings the most value for its price and boom, there it is, your dream vacation for half the price that you were expecting to pay. You just cannot for the life of you believe it, so you instantly buy it and off you go. Once there, you're greeted by a bunch of aliens that looks like they came straight out of a game from the 1996. And not only that, they are out to eat ya. Let me present Sorge. And I'm here today to help you in figuring out if this game is worth your time and money or not. Let's do this. So what is Sorge? Well, first of all, there is a small story to the game, presented to you by walking over big green question marks. They are easy to miss and rarely do they make any sense whatso freaking ever. But hey, the story is this, you are Sorge Maximum, a short order cook, amateur engineer and professional slacker. Bored and tired of her day job, she decides to go on a holiday, but alas, she picks a cheap option. Turns out, it's a scheme by aliens who capture humans to eat their brains. Ha! <laughs> who could have figured? And that is about it. The game puts zero to no emphasis on the story, which is alright in this instance, as what I just told you gives you a base of a story that you can evolve with the game's environmental storytelling, which the game actually does fine with. And you should know this, that not once does the game ever take itself too serious. But you know me by now, I do love a little story in my games. Nothing over complicated like a Starfield game or anything like that, but just a little something to get my interest and immersion going. And honestly, this game gave me just enough and I'm so happy for it. Now apart from the story, the game's main focus is of course its gameplay. You will be traversing a bunch of different environments in 15 different levels, slaying a whooping 5 bosses that all differ somewhat from each other. And on your way to them, you will encounter a total of 30 different enemy types that you can send to the afterlife with 9 different guns plus a kicking ability. Now these 30 enemies, well, they differ a lot from each other. The game has been built using a custom engine that ensures it will run good on even a potato for a PC. It also brings that wonderful feeling of games created in the mid to late 90s. In my opinion, I'd say it feels like playing a unique take on Unreal mixed with some Turok and some effort at comedy here and there. Now let me dive just a little deeper into the enemies. They come in plenty, a whooping 30 different variations. And what's extra good with them is that none of them are hit scanners. None of them move in predictable patterns. You can literally see them just jumping around in great distances at very unexpected times and places. And that is something I'm really missing in a lot of today's shooters. Many tend to have the same move pattern for their enemies, making them clump together into one very easy kiting experience that just destroys it all. This game, however, does not suffer from that. And of course, they all use different attacks and guns, ranging from rockets to plasma rifles and melee only. And what this does to the game, it adds a certain depth to the combat, making your movement and skill feel like it really matters. You can, if you're skilled enough, avoid every single one of the enemy's attacks. And that is amped up an extra notch due to the game's incredible, incredible movement. Now, when first hearing about incredible movement, one might think, ooh, it has some tight and real responsive movement. But this, my friend, is the complete opposite of that. This game's movement, it's floaty, it's unresponsive, and it is freaking fantastic. It takes some getting used to due to it being so floaty and non-responsive. But once you get the hang of it, you can use the speed boost you get from jumping to great advantages. And it feels great doing it, almost floating through the air, kicking, shooting, and avoiding bullets. And if you didn't figure it out already, this is if wanted to a very fast paced shooter but you can for the most part take it a little slower if you want to use the corners rather than speed to your advantage it's up to you how you want to play but i love the fact that you can play it how you want to play it now what do you say we deep dive into the weapons shall we as i said there is a total 
of nine different weapons and a kicking ability, and I won't spoil all of them for you, but here are some. The guns, they are cool. Every gun that you expect to be there is there, with some really quirky but rather cool additions, like the living lightning gun that completely melts every foe that stands in its way. Each weapon at your disposal is good at different things, and they all boast an alternative fire, giving you even more layers of depth to the already deep combat. But what stood out the most to me though was the half-like sensor mines. I was not expecting to find this in the game, but hey, they are here, and if used right, oh man, they can lay waste to a lot of enemies at once. Now I can't leave the weapon segment without talking about the boomstick, the shotgun, right? <laughs> Overall, it is a good shotgun, but I highly recommend using the alternative fire that shoots two rounds rather than one due to the regular fire mode really lacking in damage. And then we have the sound. It's honestly not satisfying enough. I want a much more powerful and punchy sound to my shotgun than this one has. But on the other hand, it might not be the worst things due to it lacking the power and feeling that I want, I ended up switching up my weapons and constantly play with different ones. Which was actually kind of fun for a change. And the levels, they are well designed. I really like the platforming and the verticality that the game offered. It was actually very effective. It really broke the pace of the game for a little bit and was never overly frustrating or anything like that. It was actually quite enjoyable. And the levels, they're actually well designed with the floating movement in mind as well. They really give you the opportunity to really utilize it as you wish. You really get the chance to take down the enemies from the sky or right in their face with the shotgun, or peek from corners with the automatic gun. Now, as I said previously, the objective, it never changes. You have to find keys to unlock a reactor room, destroy the reactor, and escape. And this does get repetitive and quite boring after a few levels. So it is nice that there actually is five boss levels to change it up just a little bit. But don't expect a boss fight to take much more than two to three minutes, and then you're off destroying the next reactor again. I don't expect or want some super complicated objectives in a simple game like this, but I want a little bit more variety than I got here. Audio and graphics, you say? Well, the audio is really quirky and fun. It does sound a bit muffled at times, like unnecessarily muffled. But for the most part, the sounds, music, ambience, it all sounds like it's coming straight out of a game from the late 90s. Now, however, I really do think that it could amp down the muffled sound that it has and amp up the quality just a little bit. I don't think it would hurt the game one bit, but for what it tries to do, it does pretty well. And the graphics, they're no different. They are very simple and they look like they've been snatched right out of a late 90s game. The same thing applies here. This is a really personal taste, I know, but I like when a game dares to show a little modernization to it. For example, amp up the shadows, the lightning and reflection, but keep the rest as it is. That I think makes it more appealing to more people without hankering too much to the art style of the game. And it definitely makes me like it more. Something really cool though is that this has been built on a custom engine, just like Roth, which is always a neat thing when we got to experience something unique as a custom built engine. In conclusion however, this is a fantastic steal that you can get for a whooping $5 and if you're looking for a real throwback shooter with a bunch of quirkiness and fun to it, well then this game will not disappoint. Everything works well and as intended, the movement is very satisfying and fun to use, the weapons they are both unique and expected. But most of all, they have a nice feeling to them, although a little more punch would not have hurt them at all. The levels? Well, they are well designed, allowing you to really put that movement to good use. The enemies? They will put up a challenge, but it never feels unfair, and they often move in unpredictable ways. And the objectives? Well, they stay the same, but the bosses are sprinkled in here to spice things up every fourth level or so. So heck, for $5, this is a really nice, high quality steal for you. But before you rush off and steal this game from Steam, why don't you check out these amazing shooters as well, you might just find a new gem in here. <laughs> 